Welcome. I'm Anthony Kwan, the Science, Technology, Engineering, Mathematics Consultant for the Los Angeles County Office of Education, Division of Curriculum and Instructional Services. This module, created by the Fresno County Office of Education, is just one of many tools available to help you in your math textbook adoption under the new Common Core State Standards. I will take you through the toolkit so that you will be able to work with your adoption team to select your materials. If you have not already done so, please download the toolkit and any additional pieces of information from the website. As you can see, this toolkit is full of information and lots of pieces to it. So take the time now, review the pieces, review the content, and then make sure, again, that you download and save it to a desktop, laptop, or other digital device. The toolkit is based on the Common Core State Standards for Mathematics and the newly adopted California Math Frameworks. What I'd like for you now is to consider some things for the adoption. Number one is your roles and responsibilities as you are looking at the adoption materials. So state law grants governing boards the authority to approve and adopt instruction materials. Now in the past, everyone had to go through the approved list and that is the only uh, materials that you are able to select from. Under Assembly Bill 1246, that is no longer the case. And you are now free to adopt materials that are not on the list. So that is something that you will need to consider. That's only because of the fact that the only things you need to be sure of is the Common Core are aligned to those materials that are not adopted. The other thing that you will also need to be sure of is that you do not need to adopt so long as the materials that you currently have are also Common Core aligned or that you are able to make those alignments as you are go implementing the Common Core State Standards. The toolkit is evaluative in nature and as mentioned based on the CDE framework, specifically the chapter on instruction materials. It is also based on the math progressions and based on the Common Core State Standards. So we're now going to go ahead and go through the toolkit, but let me first orient you to this toolkit. You'll see here on this slide on section one, we'll be looking over the alignment to standards and progressions. This is pretty much the brunt of this module that you'll be looking at. Then we'll move into section two, alignment to the draft frameworks, which looks at alignments to standards, program organizations, assessments, universal access, and instructional strategies. As we look at the organization, please remember that we are looking at clusters, and we are also looking at the scope and sequence. So when you look at this slide, Operation and Algebraic Thinking, fifth grade, OA, the right, right and interpret numerical expressions are the clusters. So that the 1, 2, 2.1 are the important clusters for that particular uh, standards. Then when you look at analyze patterns and relationships, that is a second set of clusters. The standards below it are what you will need to focus on with your students. So why are the alignments important? The alignments of standards and progressions help to build your content knowledge. It'll also help students to build their content knowledge as they progress from one grade to the next. You'll also need to build on pedagogy. So for instance, you will need to think about kindergarten and then how are the skills in kindergarten, the delivery of the content passing on into the first grade, into second grade, through middle school and into the high school. You'll also need to make sure that you look at the scope of the Common Core State Standards for Mathematics. So as we look at the K2 counting cardinality, this begins on page five of your toolkit. The textbook provides daily routines that help students develop their proficiency with both perceptual and conceptual subitizing, being able to see the quantity of a set without having to count. So as you're looking at this particular example, you'll see a grid of 10 boxes, and it's filled with seven circles. Are students able to recognize that that is in a set pattern? If they were in 10 boxes and seven of them are filled, will they be able to tell that the three are missing? The other is the arrangement. Can you arrange this in a different manner? So if you have seven, how, can, how else can you organize these dots? Uh, four and three, five and two, one and six. 
So that is counting in cardinality, something very heavy at the K through 2 grade levels. As we look on, here are lessons that lead to third grade multiplication. So as students engage with addition in ways that prepare them for multiplication, again, going back to the example, you have now 10 boxes. And when you're looking at these 10 boxes, are students, again, able to see how this is arranged in patterns? Do they need to count by e uh, evens or odds? Do they count by twos? Can they count by fours? Can they count by threes? Can they count by fives? So multiplication itself should not be introduced until third grade. And that is something, again, that you need to look at. So as we continue to progress with multiplication in three through five, Students develop an understanding of the meanings for multiplication and division of whole numbers. So our elementary teachers, you're used to seeing how we have to group patterns, we have to group objects, and then something like this particular example, 4 times 6 equals 24. Typically, we have students drawing objects and then dividing them up into groups of 6 and with 4 stars in each. So that equals 24. But are there additional activities? Are there additional ways for students to also recognize that there's more than one set of numbers, uh, more than one set of answers that are available to students? So as we move into progressions for the third through fifth grade approach to fractions, we're now moving away from the grouping into a number line. And so when you look at this particular sl slide, you'll see A, B, C, D, E, and F. With A being an unknown, F is 1. You have B as 1 half. And a possible question could be, does B represent 1 half on this number line? And as many elementary teachers know, something like this type of task is conceptually difficult for students to understand. Yet, at the third through fifth grade, we are now pushing for academic rigor. And now it is going to be very important that the materials reflect that rigor. So we will need to recognize that F is 1 and that B is probably not 1 half, where it would be closest to. So now we are now moving into standards of mathematical practice and talking about reasonability. As students progress into 6th through 8th grade, it's now an approach to number systems. It is now an approach to ratios and proportions. So here is a quote from the toolkit. The textbook represents addition and subtraction of rational numbers on horizontal and or vertical number line diagrams. So as you're looking at this particular example, you'll see that this is written in decimals as well as in fractional mode. And students will need to recognize how close is 1 half to 1.7? Is that a reasonable length? Is that a, a reasonable answer? If not, then how would you justify the answer? How would you argument? How would you validate that answer? Please take the time now in small groups to review section one of the toolkit. As you're looking over this toolkit, please take this into consideration. Choose a grade span to analyze. Then, using the Common Core Standards and the Math Progressions, Verify that curriculum contains lessons that are aligned to the Common Core State Standards. You have a template that will ask questions, possible topics to examine in the K2 span, possible topics to examine in the 3-5 span, 6-8, and if you are at the high school levels, you can do something similar as well. These topics are given to you to help with your curriculum decisions. Let's begin and think about the following questions for Section 2 program organizations. How is the textbook set up? Please understand, again, you need to know what the standards and clusters are for your grade levels. You need to know how it's organized by clusters within units. Ask yourself, how is RTI implemented? Is RTI implemented? Are there acceleration components available for you? And what support materials exist now? So let's begin with alignment to standards. As you look through the materials, are the math content correct and factually accurate? Review the various lessons. Check for definitions and accuracy. 
Are the materials teaching or are they relying on tricks? We know that something like one-third divided by four-fifths is a typical task. How is the book asking you to teach how to solve this? Flip the second fraction and multiply simply is not enough. Where is the academic rigor? Where is the conceptual understanding? We want materials that will offer multiple ways of learning the content without the tips or the tricks. As you continue to look through the materials, look carefully at how the materials approach the standards for mathematical practice. So in this particular diagram, make sense of problems and persevere in solving them. Before, think about the problem, ask myself, which strategy will I use? So you have a typical diagram of something that is done before, during, and after. Is this appropriate for your grade levels? Are you looking for something a little bit more rigorous? Are you looking for something more advanced? So the materials, again, include the standards for mathematical practice at each grade level or course. And so check to see if that is indeed the case. Take the time now to review section two, parts one and two, alignment to standards, pages 15 through 19 of your toolkit. Looking at part three, understand that at any grade level, all stakeholders are focused on major clusters. So be aware that you also take time to look at the supporting and additional clusters. The supporting clusters often are the applications that assist students in understanding the mathematical concepts. How are the materials addressing the supporting clusters and the additional clusters? Are the materials approaching the supporting and additional clusters in a beneficial in a more effective manner to help you teach towards the major clusters? As you look at the grade level progressions, keep this diagram in mind with you. This shows you the frame of reference in which you could approach teaching and learning. At kindergarten, you can see that there's only one, two, three sets of standards that really need to be focused on. Counting cardinality, operations algebraic thinking with number and operations in base 10, and measurement data with geometry. Then when you move into each grade level, there should be a progression, a sense of scaffolding, so that students will be able to build upon that foundation from grade level to grade level. So as they finish off the fifth grade, the skills that are necessary to move into the middle school should be there and in place so that they can understand and move forward into ratios and proportional relationships, number systems, expressions and equations, statistics and probability, functions, and then from the middle school be able to progress into the high schools at a much faster, more rigorous, more conceptual understanding so that they are successful at the high schools. Take time now to review parts three and four, alignment to standards, pages 26 through 29 of the toolkit. Remember that assessments are different. Beyond multiple choice, how are the materials addressing assessments? Is it a section on procedural applications? Are the assessments utilizing standards of mathematical practice? How are students being asked to think about the math tasks? Are the questions written at different levels? How accurate and precise should students answer the tasks? How rigorous and challenging are the assessments? Essentially, you want to be sure that the four major claims are addressed. You also want to see if there are opportunities for students to work with technology. How are teachers referred to the technology? Are real-world complex scenarios existing there? Do the technology really enhance what is going on in the mathematics? Take time now to review Part 5 and Universal Access. Looking at universal access, here's a statement from the 2013 math frameworks. Students with special needs must be provided access to the same standards-based curriculum that is provided to all students. So as you're looking through the materials, is there differentiation for all students? Not just your special ed students, but for your ELDs, for your basic learners, your advanced learners, for your proficient learners. Is there corrections for common misconceptions? 
Are there specialized teaching methods or materials for students with special needs? What strategies exist for the English learners? What strategies are being recommended for students with disabilities? And what about the alternate lessons for exceptional students? Is there increase in depth, rigor? Is there focus and coherence? The Fresno County Office of Education have included a scoring template for you. So as you're looking at the scoring template, please be sure to create as many copies per program. And here in California, California is a textbook adopting state for K through 8th grade materials only. Here, the State Board of Ed have recommended 30 programs ranging from kindergarten through the 8th grade, including an Algebra 1 and a Math 1 program. But that is the only programs that are at the high school level. High school textbooks will not be recommended by the State Board of Ed, again, only by state law, State Board of Ed recommendations for K through 8th grade. So high schools, you're free to choose and select textbooks that are appropriate for you. The other thing that you will need to know is that the State Board of Ed will be again allowing you to adopt textbooks that are not recommended by the State Board under AB 1246. And the other question you need to ask yourself, do you really need to adopt a textbook? With the new frameworks in place, districts do not have to adopt new textbooks, especially if you have just recently purchased them. The only districts that will need to purchase are those that are not aligned to Common Core or are not aligned to the 97 frameworks. So if you, are, if you have purchased new textbooks recently, all you need to do is show documentation and show that you are using those books in alignment to Common Core. That is to say that you have a process for looking at textbooks and that you know what you want to do or have plans in how to incorporate the current textbook materials in Common Core practice. Here are some final thoughts for you. You are not limited to the use of this particular toolkit. You can use sections that are applicable to you. You can skip sections. You can create new portions. Some other things that you may want to consider is pilot the programs before actually adopting anything. Also invite publishers to come out and make presentations to your schools, to your districts, to your adoption teams. And again, just because the toolkit exists here, this is not the only toolkit available. Please feel free to use any toolkit that you have in order to make your informed decisions regarding the adoptions of Common Core State Standards materials. Thank you for watching the Math Adoption Toolkit through the Los Angeles County Office of Education. I would like to thank Fresno County Office of Education for creating the toolkit. Thank you to Tyler Cook and his team for producing this video. A thank you to Raynette Sanchez, Director of Curriculum Instructional Services, and Yvonne Contreras, Assistant Director of Curriculum Instructional Services. Most of all, thank you for doing the important work of improving teaching and learning for all students here in Los Angeles County. Feel free to contact me by phone or by email if you have any more questions, concerns, or comments. I'll end with this quote by John Wellwood. The most powerful agent of growth and transformation is something much more basic than any technique, a change of heart.